So in this final part of the video tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to deal with the situation where you need to um, have strings that are not in Unicode, where you're actually dealing with strings which are in ASCII format. So what's in modern Python we call byte strings. And I'll also make a mention of uh, what we call raw strings as well. So since version 3.0, all strings in Python default to being Unicode, unless you explicitly say this is not a Unicode string. And so it's impossible to embed international characters into those strings. And you can also use Unicode characters in Python code. Although there's a caveat here, and that is that not all Python editors um, understand Unicode uh, characters and uh, will not always like the, the what they see if you start writing Unicode in them. So you just need to be a little bit careful um, uh, before you go off and do this. But it does mean that, that this is all um, legal Python. So um, I can uh, have a variable who's a string variable and its letters can all be Greek letters. That's using the uh, Unicode symbols that are the Greek, the Greek characters. And um, rather nicely, perhaps I can, if I really want, I can um, uh, make a variable, uh, which is the, the Unicode character pi, and I can give it the value of pi. Um, the only problem I then have is that actually just typing in my programming code gets kind of painful because my keyboard probably can't produce the Greek letter pi very easily. Um, and in fact, in this example, I was copying and pasting from Word in order to get the symbols into the Jupyter notebook because there's no easy way in Jupyter to go and enter um, the Greek symbols like that. Um, and so that I can then go and print out either those, the, the, the Greek as Greek, or I can refer to my pi variable by it, its symbol pi. And that all works just fine. So as we said right at the start of unit one, representing a sequence of uh, representing binary data as a sequence of ASCII characters can still be quite a useful thing to go and do. And so when Python switched from using ASCII strings to Unicode strings, it was still important to be able to actually have a thing that was still would behave like a, a string of bytes. And so in Python, we have a thing called a byte string or a byte array data type. Um, and you can create byte strings by just prefixing the, the opening quote with a letter B. So for example, here what I've done is I've created an ordinary string, hello world. I've then created a thing, a byte string by putting a leading B in front of my opening quote and called it hello world. And then if I just ask it, what's the type of these two things? Then you see the ordinary string comes up as, as a class STR, that's a, a Unicode string. Whereas the byte string, it tells me is of class bytes. So Python is saying, oh yes, this is a different type of variable. So it's um, just in the same way that you can have um, integers and floating point numbers, and they're both basically, you, know, you can both store whole numbers in those, both those types of variables. Um, in um, Unicode and uh, byte strings, you can store ASCII characters, um, but they are distinctly different types. And in fact, I think in some ways the analogy is quite good because of course floating point numbers can do a lot more than just store whole numbers, whereas integers can only store whole numbers. Well, Unicode can do a whole lot more with storing all kinds of interesting characters whereas a byte string intrinsically only works with uh, the ASCII codes that correspond to 0 to 255. Um, if you look on the internet um, for Python examples, you may well come across examples of code which was written for Python 2. Uh, a giveaway here is that the prints um, don't have brackets on them, that print is being used as a keyword rather than as a function. Um, so if you see a print without brackets, without parentheses on it, then you immediately go, oh yes, that's old Python 2 code, and probably is not going to do things in a very uh, sort of modern way. Um, so in Python 2, if you wanted to say this is a Unicode string, you could, but you had to prefix it um, with a U in front of the opening quote. And actually, this still works in, in modern Python. You can still do 
uh, put a U in front of the opening quote. Um, but if we do that and then ask it um, what's the type of the uh, or, uh, of the new that Unicode string versus an ordinary string, you see they both come up to both things of class string. So in other words, the leading U before the opening quote doesn't actually do anything at all um, in modern Python, and it's just a, a hangover to make old code still compatible. To convert uh, between Unicode and uh, byte strings, then you have to do some special uh, methods. Uh, and that's because you have to deal with the fact that Unicode might have characters that aren't directly um, accessible as, as ASCII. So when you want to make a binary representation of a Unicode string, you need to do some conversion work and that's called encoding. And then um, if you've got some uh, data, binary data, which has been encoded to um, represent a Unicode string, then you have to decode that data in order to get it back to um, a Unicode string. And there are different methods of encoding and decoding, and you kind of have to use the right one. So if it's encoded in a certain way, you have to decode it that way. Otherwise, you might get a corrupt data. Um, but the default, um, if you don't specify how to encode or decode, is a thing called UTF-8. And most of the time, it just works. So most of the time, you don't have to worry about this. And it's only if you're kind of dealing with some slightly obscure, um, uh, typically when you're reading in data from another program, uh, particularly there's another program that's been written um, in uh, a country which uses a different default set of characters, then it, it can get a little bit um, harder to work out what's going on. Um, so for example, here, I'm gonna take the uh, ordinary string and I'm just going to encode it. And the result you see is now got a leading B in front of that ending quote, which tells you that it's a byte string. Um, uh, and likewise, if I take that byte string and I do decode on it, then um, it doesn't any longer have a, a B in front of that ending quote, meaning it's converted it back to an ordinary string. Um, so byte strings and ordinary Unicode strings look very, very similar when you just have ASCII characters in them, because um, you can just convert um, in a sort of straightforward way from one to the other. Um, when you don't have ASCII characters is when it starts getting a little bit more complicated. So if we go back to our Greek string we had um, um, and then encode it uh, and then print out what you get, then you see the result uh, looks really quite messy. So those backslashes, uh, the backslash X is telling you that the next thing it's going to give you is a binary code in hexadecimal. Or a, uh, it's going to give you a hexadecimal character code. So um, you have to then speak base 16 to decode this, but that's a sequence of characters um, where the uh, hex code CE is being used to say the next thing is uh, in the Greek alphabet. Um, and then the letter within the Greek alphabet. Um, but then we can uh, decode it again, and we go back and we get back to our, our original Greek string. So it is it's a reversible operation. So um, this brings us on then to the topic of backslashes. So we were seeing in that um, example before that we had some embedded backslashes. And when you have backslashes in a Python string, by default, it means the next thing after the backslash is going to do something a bit different from what you were expecting. So the common ones you're going to come across are a backslash n, which means that the, that represents a new line character. So backslash n does not mean print a backslash and then print the letter n. It means, no, I want you to print a new line character. Backslash r is the carriage return. As I was saying earlier, this, this basically goes back to the days of typewriters when um, in order to start a new line, you had to do two things. You had a, so on a, a traditional typewriter, you had a, a carriage, um, uh, which basically positioned an inky ribbon in the right place. And then that was then struck by an embossed metal lever, uh, which transferred the, the particular letter or, or symbol onto your page. And then when you reached the end of the line, you had to send that carriage back uh, to the left-hand side, and then a roller would advance the paper up one line. 
and so you had two ideas that you had one one thing which was send the um uh, uh carriage back to the start so that's the carriage return and then you had a new line which was to advance your paper up one line and because early printers basically worked on um a not dissimilar principle um then uh they re inherited um the idea of a carriage return and a new line and then uh, in early days of computing as you went from everything being on a printout to the use of a, a display screen the kind of that terminology and that that style of thinking about things was was retained um and then the other thing you might come across is a slash t that's a tab character so that is usually represented as a series of spaces typically about eight um but in terms of if you asked how long a string is with a tab character in it it would tell you it was just one long even though when you print it out it looks like it's going to take up eight spaces um uh and then um oops i've made a mistake there should be a a, a double backslash um so backslash backslash uh will give you just a single backslash um and then uh backslash quotes and double quotes and backslash single quotes can be used to go and represent a quote without it meaning a quote. Um, and I guess finally, the example we already saw was backslash X, which is telling you that the uh, next two uh, numbers or letters A to F should be interpreted as a hexadecimal number um, to give you a, a, a particular character. Okay, so... Um, that means you can easily, um, for example, embed a new line inside a string with just putting a backslash n in the right place. Um, uh, if you put a just a carriage return, then you'll see what happens. It overwrites the start of the line. Um, so that's probably not a useful thing to go and do, but you know, whatever. Um, and then tabs will go and add extra spaces into your string. And then finally, if you want to have a backslash, then you need to have a double backslash. And if you want to have a double backslash, you need to have four backslashes. Um, and this is kind of one of the problems you get to if you're if you have to deal with um, uh, lots of backslashes. So, for example, because in Windows, the backslash is used to mean the separator between directories in a directory path. Um, or, or uh, you know, you can end up in a situation where it, it just gets a bit insane, the number of slashes you end up having to put down. Um, and so um, there's a. Uh, and there's also, as we'll come across in unit four, backslashes get used a lot in regular expressions. And again, it, it just gets really confusing if you have to double all your backslashes up all the time. Um, so the way around this to avoid um, these backslash codes doing working as backslash codes is you use what's called a raw string. And you put the letter R at the front of the ahead of the quote. And then that tells it that all the slashes you see are just slashes. Um, uh, with the exception of the uh, slash quote, um, which uh, stops the, the quote from being used as a quote. Um, and so that still allows you to put um, quote characters into your, your string without accidentally terminating your string before you meant to. So at various points in this um, video unit, I've talked about um, the uh, character code or the underlying number that's used for each individual character. And Python provides a couple of functions for letting you work with these. So if you want to know what is the numeric code for a given letter, then you've got the ORD function. So the ORD function will take a single string and will return the character code that goes with it. So for example, the letter A has the character code 65. And notice that's one of the ones that's zero to 127, because that's still the original ASCII uh, code from when we only had um, the Latin alphabet numbers. Whereas the Greek letter pi has the code 960 in Unicode. Um, and that's a relatively low number, actually, as far as Unicode is concerned, telling you that, that pi is one of the things they think is used more often. And then the converse operation is the CHR function. So CHR will go and um, give you the letter that corresponds to a particular number code. And so again, if I just give it 65 and 960, then it prints out A and pi 
um, as the result. And so with this, you can go backwards and forwards between the um, the numerical codes that underlie what's happening to the string and the, the characters that represent the string. Um, 